The world is changing. While our climate is on the brink of disaster, the human race is playing catch up to what this really means. And quite rightly, as our eyes have been opened, we want action rather than words. The recent UN Climate Change Summit in Glasgow is an example of how seriously climate change issues are being taken worldwide. COP26 brought together leaders from across the globe under the banner of uniting the world to tackle climate change. Ahead of the summit, the UAE announced it would invest more than $160 billion to become the first Gulf state to achieve net zero carbon emissions by 2050. As a society, however, we're not just waking up to environmental concerns. We are increasingly aware of the way we treat one another, whether that be at work or in the community. And we want fairness and transparency from our public figures and organisations. These issues are increasingly appearing under the banner of Environmental, Social and Governance, ESG. Clearly, our industry is not immune from this seismic shift in global perspectives. We know that ESG issues are now a major contributor to the way clients choose their investments. Climate change concern has been a key contributor in the rise of ESG. Plus, in the last decade, we've seen the rise of a more socially conscious generation. Young investors want to make a difference. They want to know their financial choices reflect their own view of the world. And then there was COVID. 2020 really proved to be the watershed moment for responsible investing and ESG across the globe. The pandemic forced us to pause and reset our views on what truly matters. We began to look at the world with new eyes. Responsible investing has become a key component of any sound investment strategy. Integration of ESG factors is crucial to mitigating risks while ensuring increasingly stronger returns. ESG is clearly not just a fad. New funds are appearing on the market all the time. We've seen exponential growth in this industry, in this sector. While investing responsibly used to be very much an emotional decision, there's now tangible proof that it provides great returns. We can reconcile doing the right thing with making a profit. There's no need to sacrifice long-term returns. Responsible investing can be done with the heart and the head. To understand how the regions in which we do business are coping with the rise of ESG concerns, we researched the issue, carrying out our own global survey of advisors. We were interested to find out if there had been any change in investor attitudes towards ESG during the last 18 months. We looked at whether the global pandemic had played any part in the uptake of responsible investment. In the Middle East, a key market for RL360, the pervading view is that while change had been on the horizon for a while, COVID-19 has accelerated the process. The region's social consciousness has long been demonstrated by Sharia principles, which align well with the social aspects of ESG. However, their main challenge is their current reliance on fossil fuel production. However, change is afoot, with the GCC countries recently committing to a net zero carbon by 2050. Now, according to HSBC's survey of capital markets, issuers and investors, the Middle East is experiencing a change in attitude towards green infrastructure, social welfare and sustainable finance. 93% of issuers and 65% of investors cite the benefits of ESG. And social welfare has been brought into focus as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Solar power is deemed the new oil for the region because of year-round sunshine and lower financing costs. And this isn't just talk, we are now seeing a proliferation of solar power plants that have been created in the region and offer diversification away from the region's reliance on fossil fuels. In our own advisor survey, results show that 85% of respondents in the region are promoting ESG in some capacity, though only 15% believe that responsible investing is in the most important consideration for their clients. 46% of respondents still believe that the security of the investment is the main concern. Interestingly, when questioned on the percentage of new investments being made in responsible funds, nearly half answered between 10% and 30% whilst a quarter believe the proportion is 30% and greater, and this is the highest across all regions surveyed. The responses to the survey do indicate that the financial advice industry is embracing the benefits of responsible investing. 
However, more can be done. Education on the merits of ESG as a risk mitigation tool and emphasising that investing responsibly does not mean sacrificing returns are an important part of raising awareness. IFGL's RL360 and FPI brands work proactively in this area to provide credible options. It's part of an overall ESG strategy that seeks to develop understanding and sophistication in this area for clients and advisors alike. So how do we support advisors and clients globally? We want our products to be the first choice for a responsible investor taking out an offshore savings and investment plan, regardless of where they are based. To that end, in 2020, we embarked on a responsible investment research program that culminated in the launch of a new sector containing ESG thematic funds in the RL360 defined range. The responsible investment sector is available to savings, investment and protection products and offers 15 funds across six broad themes. We sought to include funds from managers which we believe are credible in this space and enhanced our investment governance process to include ESG elements in order to combat the spectre of greenwashing. We added thematic funds that seek to combat climate change as well as funds promoting healthy living, gender equality and efficient use of resources and energy amongst others. We added the Morningstar Sustainability Rating and Low Carbon designation to our online fund centres. These are performance monitoring and analysis tools which help our plan owners and advisors understand how their overall portfolio or a potential portfolio rates for ESG factors. To support the sector launch, we have provided a wide range of educational material about ESG to help plan owners and their advisors. And in recent months, we hosted a range of Zoom ESG webinars for advisors in conjunction with fund managers, which were very well attended. This all took place in the global context of COVID, which only served to reinforce the importance of the actions we were taking and strengthen our commitment to supporting responsible investment. And we didn't stop there. Following the success of RL360's Responsible Investing Fund range, we introduced the same for FPI. We are committed to continuing to support and promote responsible investing. Ultimately, we believe responsible investing and understanding ESG factors are an integral part of ensuring future financial well-being, as well as contributing to efforts to increase transparency, improve society, remove inequality and combat climate change. However, the growth of ESG does present a challenge in the shape of misrepresentation of green credentials by both asset managers and companies. Done to raise a company's profile, and also to avoid anti-selection by socially conscious consumers, this behaviour is often referred to as greenwashing. And without globally standardised reporting rules, greenwashing will always be a challenge. There are regional efforts being made to create standards, such as the European Union taxonomy and their sustainable finance disclosure regulation. But unless reporting is globalised, the ESG playing field cannot be level. One way of understanding if an asset manager is walking the walk on ESG is to consider whether or not they are using their large aggregate holdings in companies and therefore their blocks of voting rights to support and advance ESG behaviours. Proxy voting records of asset managers are increasingly being disclosed in a bid to demonstrate credibility and combat claims of greenwashing. This information can therefore be used by investors, institutional or personal, to understand the level of engagement of asset managers and therefore their funds. Voting is only a part of the puzzle. It is important for asset managers to talk to company directors to ensure they are supporting long-term sustainable business practices and that shareholder value is not eroded by ESG risks, such as those posed by extreme weather or difficulties in retaining skilled workers. Active ownership is now increasingly being seen in action. Recent shareholder action against major fossil fuel companies in Europe in particular has been striking, with shareholder support seen for a number of climate-related resolutions. This European action casts a particularly long shadow over the Middle East, a region which contains some of the highest oil producers globally, according to US Energy Information Administration rankings, and which has a number of key ESG-related challenges. The fossil fuel industry in the Middle East is likely to be a key part of climate and energy transition strategies in the region and, as such, will inevitably find itself under the same kind of scrutiny and shareholder activity as similar companies in Europe. 
Many of the major European oil companies have joint ventures with counterparts in the Middle East. So whilst much of the oil in the region is government controlled, it is likely that behaviours enforced through shareholder action in the West will gradually be seen in the Middle East. This is especially likely as governments in the region coalesce their energy transition strategies and try to diversify away from fossil fuel reliance into sustainable and renewable sources of wealth and energy. Energy is only one of a number of ESG challenges in the region. Water scarcity is an increasing issue, with a reducing water table and a reliance on desalination plants to satisfy growing water requirements, which carry their own environmental impacts. The plants can impact local wildlife, add pollution and have high energy requirements. Waste treatment is also a major issue, with the UAE's per capita waste generation amongst the world's highest and the majority of waste ending up in landfill. The government is taking measures to divert 75% of waste from landfill by the end of 2021. One of the world's largest waste to energy plants is under development, with additional plants in Sharjah and Dubai, with the goal of incinerating in the region of two-thirds of household waste. All of which is to say, advisers can't allow themselves to be fooled into thinking none of this applies to them. These changes will certainly impact the way in which our industry survives and thrives. If the companies we deal with and the clients we serve, along with the wider world, are putting the pressure on, how can our industry possibly ignore it? Why would we want to? ESG is becoming a mainstream form of investment. So, what are we doing about it as a group? Like others during the pandemic, we relied heavily on video meetings when we couldn't meet face to face. And this meant a huge reduction in the amount of energy expended via travel. Given that we are an international company, clearly some travel will have to resume for our staff now travel restrictions are easing, but to nowhere near pre-COVID levels. Video meetings are here to stay and our carbon footprint is reduced. Digitalization was key throughout the pandemic for instance, we fast-tracked the introduction of digital signatures, something we'd been working towards for a while but had not yet launched. This has proven massively popular with both advisors and clients, who are happy that it has resulted in cleaner business and faster turnarounds. So, as well as saving on paper, we're no longer sending as many hard copies out around the world, once again resulting in a much reduced carbon footprint. While digital solutions have always been front of mind at IFGL, we have now taken a step further and are wholeheartedly embracing digitalization as a concept. We are currently working on a digital engagement project that will take us to the next level of doing business online, digitally integrating all of our systems. We hope to be able to share more news on this in the near future. Socially, we do a lot to support the communities where we have offices. We contribute to local charities and organisations and during the pandemic, we donated £30,000 plus worldwide. Our governance structures are sound and our group risk, legal and compliance team ensure we comply with all legal and regulatory requirements in the jurisdictions in which we operate. But there's much more to do. And so we're looking at our own ESG impacts as a group. We will be focusing a lot of attention on this in future, working to embed ESG principles into the group's DNA. The evidence clearly points then to ESG fast becoming integral to the majority of future investment choices in the Middle East and across the rest of the world. Our research shows more and more investors are aware of this and many advisors are ahead of the game too. But if you're not one of those advisors, it's time to get up to speed. The question is no longer why ESG, it's why not.